So good afternoon. After after Egypt, you know, uh, now we are the country. Uh, we have we we are the country with the largest disease burden, and we are also planning a hepatitis C elimination in our country. So, so this is the disease burden. You see, Pakistan stands as the uh, high country with the highest hepatitis C disease burden in the world, and. Uh, and with with this uh, large number of hepatitis C infected population, we, we fear and p people think that Pakistan will also face uh, very quickly a liver cancer epidemic. So in, in 2008, we had a hepatitis C prevalence of 5%, and over the years, it has increased to 7.5%. Uh, between the four provinces, we have two large provinces, Sindh and Punjab, which ha have the highest uh, prevalence. And every 20 minutes, a Pakistani dies of hepatitis C-related complications like liver cirrhosis or liver cancer. And as I told you earlier, that the, the two pro uh, these are, this is the prevalence in the four provinces, along with the viric pre uh, viremic prevalence. The overall viremic prevalence is 4.3 percent, and we have about almost 10 million viremic people living in Pakistan. So we have to search for them, look for them, diagnose them, and treat them. And this is the divide between the provinces, with almost about six million people living in Punjab, and about two million living in. Sin. So, so, so that's a huge task that we have to undertake. And, and this is this is a very important slide because this has been shown many times where we 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 have a pool of about almost 10 million people who have the viremic infection, and then uh, the, there was this mathematical modeling done uh, by Homi and Peter, and it showed that we were adding about almost four uh, four hundred and seventy thousand or point four seven million people every year as new infections and and the n numbers who were treated and the numbers who died were really so small that the, this pool of infection was just kind of going up and up so we were actually thinking that re is is this really that we are adding so many new infections of you know 0.47 uh, millions so we actually undertook this study and this is being done currently in Pakistan with the, it's a welcome study done by through Graham Foster and 25000 people have been screened over the last year and anti hcv negative people who are screened again after a year and our current incidence is 0.1% so let's see <laughs> if we exclude less than 18 years which is 45% of the population so our incidence actually is 100000 new infections and not 470,000 that was calculated earlier. So, 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 so the disease burden and the new infections, you can really be happy that they're really go, uh, not that high. So, so uh, you know, like if you don't do anything, anything. So, this is the incidence which you see is really go, going up by 2035. It be, almost becomes 11 percent, and then there are 30,000 years of disability and 350,000 years of life loss, with about a GDP loss of three billion to Pakistan every year. But once we do a good intervention and uh, and and we we, we spend on uh, the prevention prevention and treatment and cure, uh, the total infections will go down, the, the mortality and morbidity will go, uh, go down, and this we can do by the uh, by 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 various examples that have been running currently in Punjab and Sindh, where we educate, prevent, test, and treat the population. So responding to this high disease burden, the Prime Minister of Pakistan uh, was sensitized to really step up and do something for the, for the country. And Prime Minister has been very kind to approve uh, uh, 35 billion Pakistani rupees funding for the SCV elimination. Uh, and this is about 50% of the cost that we had actually uh, calculated. So the 50% would be provided by the government of Pakistan, while the rest of the 50% would be raised by the provinces through their own budgets. So the federal government will actually procure the commodities like the rapid test, the PCRs, and the medicines, and it will supply it to the uh, provinces as per their need basis. And the rest of the financing will come either through the provinces or through some external partners. 
So I'll not go to, uh, the, the, in the details of all these uh, numbers, but all I'm trying to tell you that we have calculated yearly the numbers to be trusted, numbers to be treated in each province, in each district, and uh, what age groups and what numbers are, are we expecting for the PCRs and for the rapid tests. So this all calculations have been done very meticulously. And as you know that 98% of all the money that has been uh, you know, approved is going to the uh, procurement of the commodities uh, and very small number uh, amount is going for the, uh, you know, in, in other resources. So it's all like a real support with the commodities to the provinces. And we are also addressing the challenges because you know that in Pakistan most of the data is paper-based, so we are moving to the electronic data entry, which is which is being currently done, and and we are we are adopting the Punjab's uh, electronic data entry system, and we we, we are using the uh, national identity card as, as the identifier to to prevent any duplication. Uh, we we are working on the mass campaigns to increase awareness, and we are engaging the private sector because 60 percent of our health care is delivered through the private sector. Uh, and then uh, we, 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 we plan to go down to the grassroots level, to the basic health units and the rural health centers, which are being upgraded. And the reflux blood testing would be done, and the samples would be sent to the lab, and patients would not go to the labs. And again, here, we will engage the private sector to take the bloods and send it to the proper labs. Uh, the reporting of the PCR, we have got adequate machines. We have, we have calculated the numbers of uh, machines that we have, and we think that there are adequate numbers of PCR, PCR machi machines in Pakistan which can give us the results every day. And the reporting would be done electronically. And then for the decentralization and task, uh, task shifting, we, we are engaging the nurse and the healthcare workers uh, who will be using the testing, hepatitis C testing and treatment guidelines, and the primary care physicians shall be used to dispense the treatment and follow the patients. So in conclusions, Pakistan has the highest hepatitis C infected population in the world with almost about 10 million people who are awaiting the diagnosis and treatment. We had about 100,000 new cases every year, and there's a, there's a need to work on disease prevention along with the diagnosis and treatment, but as you know, there are many challenges with such a huge population to screen and then trust and treat. But this can be done with joint efforts from all stakeholders, and private sector engagement will make a difference. And together, we will be, inshallah, uh, able to eliminate hep hepatitis. Thank you. Thank you.